Hey guys, it's Rich and Victoria, and today we are just outside of Palisade, Colorado, in our rented Class C, which we'll talk about more a little bit later, but we are on our way to the RV Entrepreneur Summit in Montrose, Colorado, put on by the original RV entrepreneurs, Heath and Alyssa Padgett. For Victoria, this is your first time in an RV. This is the first time traveling in an RV. And I'm so. so excited. And over the last year or so, we've watched so many RV videos, and Rich has taught me so much. Um, when, when we got into this for the first time and I started putting things away, I, I felt like a veteran because I had seen that process so much. Um, and I'm, I'm just loving it. I mean, we've been in here, what, three hours? Three and hours. I'm, and I'm, and I'm thinking, God, I don't want to go home. I just want to keep going. Can June 2022 get here any faster is what I'm thinking. So if you've been watching, you know for sure that we're going to be ordering our rig in December, which we don't know what that's going to be yet. you got to keep watching um, as we do our rig tours. We wanted to take part in the Entrepreneur Summit, but we didn't want to have to get a hotel in downtown Montrose and then drive to the campground where the summit's taking place. So we decided to rent the Class C to kind of give Victoria a little taste of the action, if you will, and then this way we can be right in the center of all the action that's going to be taking place for the summit. Of everything and of course the very first time I am gonna spend any time in an RV and we're gonna boondock for four days so I mean, talk about just jumping in and getting your feet wet yeah I'm gonna experience all there is to experience with boondocking I'm actually looking forward to it I think it'll be fun um, and I just I, I'm so thrilled I'm gonna love this lifestyle yeah so I, and we're expecting great weather it's gonna be during the day the, the mid 90s yeah, yeah. Cool down to the low 50s at night, which would make for some great fire time. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to make our way on down to Montrose, Colorado. We've got about another two hours in our drive, and then we'll have more from the RV Entrepreneur Summit. Bye! We arrived in Montrose on Wednesday afternoon, which gave us plenty of time to get settled and familiar with our rig, and take a look around the campground before the summit officially kicked off on Thursday morning. So as we walk down, kind of class A lane here. There's a total of about 45 to 46 rigs here of all different sizes, all the way from tent campers to overlanding rigs, which are Jeeps and pickup trucks, etc., that have the tents over the top of them. And then, like I said, class Bs, class Cs, class As, fifth wheels, etc. A great mix of people that are either living on the road now or want to be living on the road soon and our entrepreneurs um, running various businesses of all types um, from CPA to self-publishing consultants like ourselves um, to lots of other businesses um, all the way to YouTube content creators who are making their living totally off of YouTube and creating content for the RV world and their business world as well. The summit was jam-packed with informational seminars. Our hosts, Heath and Alyssa, kicked it off with their plans of transitioning from full-time RVers and entrepreneurs to campground owners. They also assembled quite a group of speakers for the summit, which was very impressive. John and Peter, the RV geeks, probably the longest-running RV channel out there. Abby and Jason from the RV Miles podcast with news and information on keeping up with the constant change in the RV industry. Nate and Marissa from Less Junk and More Journey, more useful information for other YouTube content creators. Joel from Harvest Host was there to tell us about the explosive growth of the Harvest Host program. And there were plenty of other attendee-led meetups from boondocking to traveling to Alaska. Of course, with all of that learning and information, you have to have time for fun and meeting new people. There were campfires at night, wine and coffee tastings gave plenty of time to connect and organized hikes and other off-site events gave plenty of opportunity to unwind. And no RV meetup would be complete without, of course, a cornhole tournament. One of the really great things about the summit was the attendee-led meetups. Since Victoria and I have an RV cooking channel, what better way to promote your channel than to feed people? What's the one piece of equipment that every RVer, if they don't have, they should have, but one of the most versatile things for an RV? That's the Instant Pot. So I wanted to combine kind of one of my favorite things, which is barbecued or smoked pulled pork and the Instant Pot. And so what I've done is created a recipe, we call it insanely delicious uh, Instant Pot pulled pork. 
And the secret to kind of getting, a, what you're gonna do when you see it is it's gonna look like it's been smoked. It's got an actual bark on the outside of it. And the bark was put there with a rub with a combination of coffee and chocolate. So sounds strange, seems weird, but I think when you guys try it, I think it, you'll think it's, it's really delicious. So we made a taco bar and fed the entire group. There's no better way to bring people together than with food and drink. Overall, the summit was an amazing experience, meeting new people, learning a ton, and really taking our first dive into what will be our new life, living and working full time on the road. So we just spent five days in the Thor Chateau. What'd you do? <laughs> I said this thing. Oh. <laughs> in the Thor Chateau 28A Class C motorhome. I was so thrilled and surprised at how much room is in this RV. Obviously not for full-time living, but it was great for five days. Up here, obviously, this is where we drive. Um, I will say that the passenger side is a little tight. It's not going to be the most roomy thing, but it wasn't horrible at all. And in here, the couch and the dining area, obviously this is where we spent most of our time. Um, Sherman liked to slay, the lay on the couch or he laid on the floor and then Rich and I sat here. And then behind me is this sleeping area, which there was only two of us and Sherman was not gonna go up there, but his bed did when it was not in use because we have to take his big bed with us everywhere because he's an old guy. But this be perfect for, for kids. You could probably fit two small kids up there, uh, one large one for sure, but we used it for storage in Sherman's bed, so it was wonderful. And speaking of storage, I, I mean, I, I travel heavy. That's why probably we're going to go RV. So I always have everything with me. Um, so much storage here on both sides, these cabinets, there's just storage everywhere. I didn't even fill it up. I could have, but I didn't. And the second half of the RV, we've got the kitchen here, obviously not a very big work area, but I, I adapted really well um, because we've got the, the glass on the cooktop. I just put the cutting board on top and chopped here and mixed and um, not a ton of room for kitchen storage, um, but I spread things out throughout the rest of the rig. Um, didn't use the oven at all. We weren't in that situation. We did use the microwave to heat up some water for, no, for something. We did something with it, but we really didn't use it too much. Um, more storage up here is where I kept all the snacks. And this was not big and it was not small. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Um, I actually shoved everything in because we, we cook everything we eat. So we had a lot of refrigerated stuff, not as much um, frozen. But I was really happy with this. It, was, uh, it worked out really, really well. So the bed, this is like, oops, sitting on my sunglasses. Um, maybe a little bit bigger of a, f bigger of a, a little bit larger than a full, not quite a queen. Uh, Rich and I were very comfortable. I kind of like the coziness. Here is closet in here, more storage up here. We had no problem with room, a little, little table on both sides. It was just really cozy and wonderful. We really enjoyed it. And because we were in the mountains, um, it was really, really warm, but it cooled down at night. So we had the windows open. It was a great way to sleep. Okay. So here's the tight part. Are you ready for this? Oh, we left stuff in here. We have to pull all that out. Um, ouch. Very, very small, tight bathroom. However, I had no problem getting ready in here. Now I didn't like dry my hair or anything like that, but I did, you know, makeup, got ready. It really was not um, too tight once you got in there. It wasn't as claustrophobic as I thought it would be. I was totally fine with it. The one thing I will say is maybe like a, a, a accordion door or something, because this door was always getting in the way. But I understand why they, you know, put a locking door on there. And now the shower or what I'd like to call the garbage uh, uh, the garbage waiting area, because this was where we put our garbage so we didn't keep running into it, because we were boondocking and I was not taking um, many showers. This is very tight. I was in here once for like a, I'm gonna call it a 16th shower, because it really wasn't a shower. It's kind of like wash, rinse, wash, rinse. Um, it wasn't too bad. Would I want to do it every single day of my life? No, but for five days, it was absolutely wonderful. So there you go. If you want to get out there and you've never been in an RV, I cannot recommend this more highly. This, I think it's perfect for a small family. It'll get you that feel of RVing. And most likely you're going to probably be in a park or you might be boondocking, which I can recommend that now too. So I can say I am an RVer and a boondocker. Woohoo! So on the outside, there's really not a lot to talk about. You do have all your basic connections. Um, it is a unleaded gas rig, not a diesel rig. You have your simple outbound connections, uh, water, electric, etc. I will say that um, El Monte does include 
your 30 amp hose, a sewer hose, uh, chocks to help level the unit, etc. But the one thing I did want to talk about was this amazing under the bed outdoor storage space. Huge, and you can see the stuff that water hose, electric hose, sewer hose, chocks to level, all included with the unit. That's the ladder to get up to the, uh, the overhead bed in the front area. But we had multiple grills in here, a Blackstone grill, our chairs, our prep tables, things like that. So great room in this unit to store all of your outdoor needs. But overall, a great weekender rig. So driving impressions of this, what was this 28 foot uh, chateau. chateau class mm -hmm. C motorhome. Mm -hmm. um, driving impressions, anybody can drive this thing. I'm used to driving class A motorhomes, it's, it, but it's been a very long time. And I will say it, um, I got back into the saddle really, really quickly because this thing was so easy to drive. But don't let that stop you from renting something like this if you're afraid to drive it. Um, it does take up most of the highway lane and it is fairly long. Uh, but if you go slow and you take your time, if I can drive it, anybody can drive it. Um, drove nice, was smooth. Um, when we did hit some major bumps on a couple of bad stretches of freeway, it did bounce around quite a bit. Um, but I will say the ride, what was it to Montrose, Victoria, about four hours 300 miles it was, was about three, five, yeah. 300 miles but very comfortable ride we stopped along the way made ourselves sandwiches at a rest area so walk sherman walk yeah. sherman <laughs> all those sorts of things so very easy to drive anybody can do it great vacation for a couple or a family with small children i'd highly recommend renting from el monte rv down in littleton not a sponsored ad we did pay full price for our rental but their customer service was awesome their walkthrough of the rig and how to use all the systems was pretty great or they were just a good company to rent from one thing i will say is when you rent from a big company like el monte nothing comes with the rig now we knew that going toilet in toilet paper toilet paper did come you, with you'll get rig. two yep. roll two rolls yep you get <laughs> you do get two rolls of toilet paper so you do get something but there are no dishes there are no utensils no there is no bedding um, if that's something that's important to you, you might want to consider renting a Class C or something bigger if you're brave enough or bold enough um, from an individual renter or a private party. Those most of the time will have the things that you need in them, utensils, plates, bedding, things like that. Typically more expensive. Um, the reason we didn't go private party is because this was less expensive and we did have all of our own gear that we loaded into the unit. So there's one thing definitely if you're considering renting an RV to try out either the lifestyle or just take the family on a fun vacation, definitely something you'll want to consider. So there you have it, our tour and driving impressions of the Thor 28A Class C motorhome. We'll leave you today with some scenes from the drive from Denver down to Montrose, Colorado. If you haven't had the opportunity to view that stretch of road, it's really spectacular. Going through the Continental Divide, making your way into Glenwood Canyon, through Palisades, Colorado, and then ultimately into Montrose. Please be sure to like this video. It helps our channel. Subscribe to our channel and for sure hit that notification bell to be alerted when we do other videos in preparation for our venture to full-time RV living. And until next time, happy exploring.